Hi, Paula here. Today I'm going to talk about taxes you can expect to pay when buying properties in British Columbia, but stay tuned till the end because I'm going to give you first time home buyers a tip on how to maximize on one of BC's best tax credits. So when acquiring property in British Columbia, a lot of home buyers are surprised to find the price tag that's attached to it come closing date. So it's good to be prepared. I actually have a calculator on my website at highpala.com, so feel free to check that out. But I'll give you a good synopsis of everything here on this video. Um, so the first tax I'm going to talk about is GST. There's a 5% GST that applies to new builds, to pre-sales, if you're buying a pre-sale condo, for example, to land or to commercial. But it doesn't apply to most homes that have been lived in, which is going to be the majority of the homes that are out there on the market. The second tax that you can be prepared to pay and applies to absolutely every property in British Columbia is the land transfer tax. And there are some exceptions that I'll cover later, but right now I'll let you know what that land transfer tax is because it's a little bit complicated. It's actually on a scale system. The, if your property is under $100,000, you can expect to pay just a 1% transfer tax. If it is 200 to 2 million, that goes up to 2%. And then from 2 million to 3, 3 million, it goes up to 3% and above 3 million is an additional 2%. So it can start getting really hefty there. Again, I do have a calculator on my website that you can go check out at highpala.com. Now, there are some ways to find exceptions to that property transfer tax. The, um, the first one is when a primary residence, so a primary residence would be the home that you live in. You, the home is under your name and you're actually living in it. It's not a rental or investment property. So the first exception is when your primary residence is being transferred from one family member to another. So that could be a husband to a wife or a parent to a child. Then there are some exceptions you can apply for. It's a little bit complicated, so you, I would really prefer to guide you towards the government website for more information on that. But just so you know, that is a program that exists. If within a family, you're going to be transferring a primary residence. Now, the second exemption that you may qualify for is the newly built home exemption. And that one would be for houses that have been registered in the land title office after February of 2016. To qualify for that, you do need to be a person, so it can't be a corporation or a company that's purchasing the home. You need to be a Canadian resident or a permanent resident, and it needs to be your primary residence for at least one year. And then on the other hand, for the property to qualify, it needs to be under $750,000, be less than 0.5 hectares, and be located in British Columbia, of course. Now, there are a few exceptions to that. The property could be up to $800,000 and you may qualify for a partial exemption. And if it's over 0.5 hectares or has a secondary dwelling in addition to the primary residence, it may also qualify for a partial exemption of the land transfer tax. You do need to ensure that you move into the home within 92 days of the property being filed at the land title office. And you need to live there for at least the full year. Otherwise, you could lose that exemption. Now, the third exception is the first time home buyer program, and that is a fantastic program, which I really encourage you to maximize. And I'm going to give you a little tip on how you can do that at the end of the video. For this program, for you to qualify, you have to be a Canadian citizen or be a permanent resident. In addition, you have to have lived in British Columbia for the last year or filed two out of the last six years your taxes here in B.C., and very important, you could have never owned a primary residence anywhere in the world, nor have applied and utilized this program before. This program only exists once in your lifetime, which is why I encourage you really to maximize its use. For a property to qualify for the first time home buyer transfer tax exemption, it needs to be under $500,000. It also needs to be under 0.5 hectares. And most importantly, it needs to be your primary residence. So it cannot be a rental property or an investment property. It needs to be your primary residence. And I'm gonna give you some tips on how to create that in a really strategic way later in the video. Now, you may qualify for some partial exemptions under this same program if the property is $525,000 versus $500,000, and if the property is larger than 0.5 hectares and has more than one dwelling, as long as the um, one of the dwellings is a primary residence. So, the tip I have for you today, if you're a first-time home buyer, if you can remember to qualify for the program, the property has to be under $500,000 and you must be the primary residence of that property. Now, you may not be able to afford $500,000 yet, but it would be a shame to not utilize that program to its maximum. So what I would suggest you do in that case is just buy a rental or investment property now, not your primary residence, so that you're not using up that program quite yet. You buy your investment property now, and you buy something less expensive, let's say $300,000 or $200,000, whatever you can afford, get in the market, start building that equity. And once you're ready to maximize 
your first time home buyer program, get your primary residence then. Pull out the equity, do what you need to do, but try not to use that first time home buyer transfer tax program unless you can really maximize it because that is a great tax program for BC residents and we don't have a lot of tax benefits here. So utilize them when you can. Hope that was really helpful. Please visit me at highpala.com for more information or to check out that um, calculator on what transfer tax will apply to your purchase. Have a great day.